Good morning, Butler Street. Good morning. Oh, it is good to hear the voices of God's people early on a Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. I'm often reminded of the words that is shared in scripture when David said that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go and worship in the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, saints, but I am glad to be here. To be here on this Sunday meant that God has brought me through another week. <laughs> to be here with you once again, and it is indeed a blessing to be in this house, in the house of the Lord. Amen. Family, as we um, await for uh, Dr. West to be present with us, we are going to go ahead and begin service. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask that we all stand for our call to worship. Now, Butler Street, y'all going to have to help me. Do we have the call to worship? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Thank you, church family. Uh, let's begin. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to the children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, sin, whereby we death. are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth let us all say together, amen, amen. At this time, we're going to have our hymn of praise.
our day, managing our family, or many of us at our places of employment. We pray to God for your will to be done. Spirit of God, we pray right now for your people. We pray to God that in the midst of challenge, in the midst of a world that seemingly knows not your will or your way, I pray to God that these your people may be remnants, may be light bearers, may be those that will keep the world in remembrance of your will, your way, and the best that we have in our world comes from you. 
chapter 4, and I will begin reading with verse number 9. Reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning with verse number 9. Be diligent to come to me quickly, for Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world has departed for Thessalonica. Festines for Galatia, Titus for Galatia, only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. To Titus, I have sent to Ephesus, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus that Troy when you come, and from Bulls, especially the Carpus. Verse 14, Alexander the coppersmith did much harm, did me much harm. May the Lord repay him who according to his works. You You also must beware of him. For he has greatly resisted our gospel. At my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against me. Verses 17 and 18. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, so that the message might be preached fully through me, and that all the Gentiles Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. At this time, we will have our Beeler Street Declaration. Notice it is printed in your bulletin. Amen. And thank you for that, Lynn. Let us move forward with first fruits. Street. I want to come this morning and thank you all for your participation as we kicked off our new year uh, just two Sundays ago now with our first East Fruits presentation. Thank you all for your support in that. And as you will recall, I also stood before you to bring the Dollar a Day campaign as we kick off phase one of the fundraising for our Beeler Street Project. I am back to give you an update and a report, and I am very excited to report that in just that little bit of time, we have raised over $3,000. So we have come out of the gate strong. Let's, Let's keep running that race. As you came in this morning, all of you should have received a pledge card. Now, these are not the final pledge cards. The final ones will will be
dollar a day to do this. So please, 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 please utilize all of these resources. And I leave you uh, with one bit of good news and a scripture. So you, after you have given your dollar a day, don't stop there. Go out and encourage others, whether it be in your communities, in the workplace, because we are, we are seeing the fruits of, of our labor and pharmacists and healers all over the city. Son of the Harriet Brown, who is the Reginald Smith, and the DeKalb County Watershed Day crew have got their $300 donation to our cause. with a scripture, uh, it will come from 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 10, and it says in the New International Version, consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a temple at his sanctuary. Be strong and do the work. Butler Street, the Lord has chosen us. We are strong. Let's do the work. Next week, we'll have our welcome by Sister Charlotte Ladd. Will you come now? Good morning, Butler Street Church family and friends. Good morning. Good morning. It is my pleasure to welcome all persons visiting and in person with us, visiting in person and virtually. If you are a visitor, will you please stand? On behalf of Pastor West, First Lady Amaryllis West, and the entire Butler Street Church family, I say welcome. We are so glad that you chose to worship with us today. Before you leave today, will you please scan the QR code in the vestibule? The ushers will assist you. It looks like this, and it's got a little QR code on the back. We want to be able to connect with you, and we want you to connect with us. We pray that this worship service will be inspiring and will give you the experience of having love and joy in Christ Jesus. Please know that we worship in person on the second and fourth Sunday, and the first Sunday there is a joint in-person service with West Mitchell and Butler Street. Again, we are so happy you chose to worship with us today. May God bless you. And we certainly thank God for your presence. Let the church say amen. amen. All right, it's giving time. Wonderful opportunity for us to express to God how good God has been. We are only responding to God's goodness. Brothers and sisters, our Stewards are ready. They are prepared to come forth. They're going to stand this morning. and We're going to do it just a little different. Stewards, will you come down now? We're going to bless the offering. We're going to ask ushers, if you will, direct the congregants to rise and to come around. Begin from the outside. And if you will, please, let's walk around and let's bring our tithes and our offerings to God this morning. Let us pray. Oh God, how blessed we are to be able to give because you have given so much to us. We do not give because we are forced to give. We give, you, we give to you because we love you so much and because you have given so much to us. And so our gifts are in response to your faithfulness, not just today, but down through the years. Thank you for Butler Street Christian Methodist Episcopal Church for how you've blessed us and for how you are blessing us right now. You are blessing us right now. In this season, you are blessing us. But God, we pray that you will continue to bless us 
as we sow seeds, as we invest, as we offer first fruits, as we offer our tithes and our offerings, as we make pledges and commitments, as we go above and beyond our call of duty to answer the call that you have given to us, we pray that you will bless us in ways that only you can bless us. And then, God, when we give, give us a glad spirit. Let us be joyful and excited about the opportunity and the privilege to give because you woke us up this morning, started us on our way, you kept food on our table, and we can go on and on with all that you have done for us. Now let us do something for you. Let us reach and stretch. Let us imagine big. Let us think big for you. And let us build your cathedral, your home, your church, so that you may be glorified, so that when the sinner looks at us and wonder how did we do it, they will be able, we will be able to say we only did it by the grace of God, by the mercy of God, by the goodness of God. We've gone through the wilderness, but thank you, God, for building for us, for establishing and giving us favor. Now, God, give us a shout. Give us a hallelujah. Give us an amen. Give us a thank you, Jesus. One more time, Lord, give it to us so that we will forever glorify your name. In the name of Jesus, we offer our gifts. We offer our tithes. We offer all to you. And we pray that you will accept it gladly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Everyone please stand. Follow the direction of the ushers as we come. Starting from the rear.
this time we will have another selection coming from our choir, after which the word of God will come. my heart 
speak to my heart. Amen. Thank you. Let us pray. Speak to our hearts, God. Speak through your word. Open our hearts that we will hear. And not only hear, but receive what you, your word, has to say. Make it plain and clear. God, convict us where we should be convicted. Comfort us where we need to be comforted. Encourage us in your own way. So that when we leave here, we will leave not only blessed, we will leave being a blessing to someone else. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, you will find in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2. 2 Timothy, chapter 2. You will find, beginning with verse 16, 2 Timothy chapter 2. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness and their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hymenius and Philetus who concerning the truth have erred saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some nevertheless the foundation of God standeth sure having this seal the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Amen. Brothers and sisters, considering 2 Timothy chapter 2 and 2 Timothy chapter 4, it is quite evident through the text that Paul is at the end of his life as you may see and know Paul has spoken the words I have fought a good fight I have kept the faith I have finished my course henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all those that love his appearing. He says, do thy diligence to come unto me, for Demas hath forsaken me, having loved his present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. Brothers and sisters, I just want to talk briefly from the title, He Restores My Soul. He Restores My Soul. Last time we met, we preached from the book of Psalm, number 23. And as we talked about Psalm number 23, the Lord is my shepherd, it was made obvious that God is the shepherd of all of us. David, a shepherd who tended sheep, who fought lions and bears to protect those within his care, looked out for and did everything in his power to ensure that none would be lost. Sheep were prone to wander and lose their way. And in many instances, they lost their way simply by eating grass and wandering off. What is most amazing is that a good shepherd is known for leaving the 90 and 9 to go rescue the one because the one that is lost is worth your time and attention. 
God knows each and every one of us by name. He knows where we are. He knows when we feel off. He knows when we wonder. He knows when we are off course. He knows us so much that he knows the very minute and the very details of our lives. He has sent the hounds of heaven to hunt us wherever we are to make sure that we are never lost. But here is Paul in the text. Paul has come to the end of his journey. Paul, even a man after God's own heart as well, finds himself struggling in the midst of death. The king has decided to have Paul hung. Paul, a great preacher who wrote, wrote most of the New Testament, finds himself in a dungeon waiting to die. And what is interesting about Paul is that you see his humanity. You see his real pain. Let's look at Paul in the text. Paul says in the text, do thy diligence in verse 9 to come shortly unto me. If you can, hurry up. For Demas has forsaken me having loved the present world and is departed from Thessalonica. What is going on in Paul's life? The very people who were with him have now left him. Footnote, people will leave you. The very pe people who started with him have now forsook him. Here he is in a dark, cold dungeon with no books, no Bible, no people to support him. But he's in there for preaching the gospel and for doing what is right by God. Look at him. A man after God's own heart. But here he is in prison at the end of his life. And all of a sudden, you see the human pain, depression, frustration, bewilderment setting in on his life. A man who says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. A man who says, if God be for us, who can be against us? But he finds himself now wrestling with his own theology because when the crucibles of life weigh you down. The real question is, who are you when church is not in session and when the preacher can't preach you happy and when the choir is not there to encourage you? Who are you in the midnight hour when life is not adding up and when bills are not paid and when sickness sets in and when you receive a report that the doctor gave you, a report that you don't like and you don't want coming? Who are you when life is dark? Paul gives us some help and some hope in the text. He says at verse 16, at my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I prayed, I pray God that it might not be laid to their charge. Because there are times in life when God will take away your support. There are times when God will strip you of your cane. There are times when God will take away the very thing that you think you can't live without just to show you that he alone is enough and he alone is sufficient. When you are counting on things other
other than God, God has a way of releasing some things to show you that when you don't have anything or anybody else, God will be a very present help in the time of trouble. Here is what he says, and I close with this. The Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto, the heaven, unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Now watch this. Salute Priscilla and Aquila and the household of Onesiphorus. Who are they? They were supporters. They were the ones who were there when nobody else was there. And let me remind you, church, you will not walk this journey all by yourself. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart because you will never walk alone. I close with this, church. God has a way of winning your heart. And it's not always won with pretty, nice, appropriate things. Sometimes God will win your heart through the mess. God will win your heart through the crucibles. God will win your heart through the pain. God will win your heart through the stuff. What you mean by stuff, Pastor? Stuff. You didn't know where it came from. You don't know why it's there. It's just stuff. It's one thing after the other. It's stuff. I just prepared to come to church this morning. I prepared to be on time. Stuff. Life is filled with stuff. But let me tell you about stuff. God took stuff and made us. What's, what's, what's stuff? Dust. Dust. You, you look at everything you can see. It's just stuff. But look at how God takes stuff and makes music. How God can take stuff and make the world. All of it is stuff, but God uses it to bring the beauty out of life. Look at it. You wouldn't be who you are without your stuff. Someone was painting a portrait of Abraham Lincoln. And while painting this beautiful portrait of Abraham Lincoln, they overlooked all of his scars and overlooked his wrinkles. They overlooked all of the things that would that would expose his defects. And Abraham Lincoln looked at the portrait and he said, well, that's a wonderful portrait, but who is that? The painter said, that's, that's you, Mr. President. He said, he said, no, that's not me. I have a scar, a large scar on my face. You, you can't overlook that. That's me. It reminds me of who I used to be. It's there for a reason to tell me who I am. It, it, my scar identifies me. It makes me unique. Too many of us want pretty pictures without scars and without your stuff, but your stuff is the reason you speak to people. 
Your stuff is the reason you are humble. Your stuff is the reason you can walk in love and forgive other people. You wouldn't be nothing without your stuff. And God uses your stuff to make you in his image, in his likeness. Jesus Christ came through the lineage of a murderer and an adulterer. Check Jesus' lineage out. Check his lineage out. He, 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 he had Rahab, the harlot, in, in his lineage. And, and I can go on and on with, with others who were in his lineage. They, they weren't perfect people. But, but Jesus came out of imperfect people to show us that, that, that regardless of who you are and where you've been in life, God can use your stuff. You may not be able to praise God because you're ashamed of your stuff. But let me be clear today. Paul knew one thing, and that was God was with him in the midst of his stuff. Do you believe that? Do you have to sit in church as if you've always gotten it right? Do you have to sit up as if you have lived the most perfect life and that your life is filled with A pluses? No, you don't have to do that. We've gotten some Fs even if they were not in school. <laughs> some Fs can come from God. And it's okay for a principal to say or a president to say, Congratulations. Well done. It doesn't mean anything until you hear him say, well done. Paul says, I fought a good fight. I finished my course, and I have kept the faith. Don't disappoint God. Let God use you. He loves you. He died for us, and he's coming back to get us. One by one, he's preparing us. He's preparing us. God is preparing us for what is to come. So when you find yourself with stuff, remember, David said, he restores my soul. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall and Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. You remember that. And no matter how mighty all the king's horses and all the king's men were, they couldn't put him back together again. But I know somebody. His name is Jesus. And when you have fallen off of life, if when you have fallen in life, God loves you so much that God will restore your soul. He will put you back together again. Do you believe that? Have you ever fallen in life? Do you know he will? He will put you back together again. There are some things I may not know. There are some places I can't go. But I am sure of this one thing. God is real, for I can feel him deep within. Yes, God is real, real in my soul. 
cannot tell just how you felt when Jesus took your sins away but since that day oh since that I God has been real, I can feel his holy power, and oh yes, God is real, real in my soul. Maybe someone here today, maybe you're in need of prayer. Maybe you're in need of a church home. Maybe you have never been saved and you want to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. It doesn't matter how many times you've come before. You can always come and God will always love you. Whatever the situation may be, give it to Jesus. He loves you. He says, cast all your cares on me. Do not go back home burdened. Do not go back home stressed out. But come and give it to him and let him have it. He will work miracles in your life. He will make your life brand new because he is real. Will you come? Will you come? If you need to come to the altar, feel free to come. Feel free to come. Real in my soul. Yes, God is real. God has washed, made me whole. Come, come, His love for me. That's it, that's it. It's like your gold. Yes, He's real. I can feel. That's it. Yes, yes, yes. And oh.
It is like pure gold. Oh, he's real. I can feel him in my soul. And oh, yes, God is real. God is real. Real in my soul. church say amen. Amen. amen amen bless you may god bless you and may god keep you is our prayer today let me just say butler street how proud i am to see you this morning on a rainy day but you are here amen 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 Amen. I understand there is a birthday coming up on tomorrow. Whose birthday is tomorrow? Yes. Stand up that we may recognize you. Yes. Are there any other January babies? The only one in the church? Oh, two. Yes. Reverend Goforth. Amen. Thank you. Three, oh. <laughs> uh, the October babies understand why you didn't want to stand. <laughs> Amen. Blessings to you. We're going to sing happy birthday. Those of you whose birthday is today, you remain seated. We're all going to stand for the, amen. Those of you who are, whose birthday is today. Let's sing this morning. Happy birthday. To you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday Happy birthday to you. Amen, amen. Awesome, awesome. Enjoy your day. I understand your family is with you as well, so we salute you and thank God for your presence here today. Are there any other announcements? Let me just say church conference on Wednesday. There is uh, business uh, we need to take care of on Wednesday after Bible study. So please be on at 630 on Wednesday. All right. Acolytes, you may come. the acolytes are leaving, let us be reminded that we too must take our light into the world and let it shine. Amen. Let us receive the benediction. Father, how we bless you and thank you for this day. How we give you praise, honor, and glory for each and every day. Thank you for looking past our faults and yet meeting our needs. We pray, God, that as we face another week, we aren't sure what we will have to deal with. But Paul reminds us in the text that even in a dungeon, 
you're with us. Now, Lord, bless this church and let us live this week to your glory and for your honor. Now, Lord, dismiss us from this place. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, to him who is able to present us faultless, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forevermore. Church say, hey, amen, amen, amen. 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 Be safe and enjoy your week. May God bless you and keep you.